Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to day two of the G1 League Phase 3. Man, it's less of a mouthful now, but still a lot of action ahead of us for the Asian division of the G1 League. Currently, we move over to Group B. Today is going to be Chainstag versus Invictus Gaming. Boy, if you could ever imagine a tough way to start your group, I can't think of anything tougher than beating the defending G League champions, a team that made it to the land finals of the last edition of the G1 League, the International 2 defending champions, the World Cyber Games defending champions ig a tough draw especially in round one but the good news is in group b you only uh, on both of the groups you only need to actually finish third or better to have a shot at advancing to the land finals as one of the four coveted slots in the asian allotted to the asian team so anyway with that being said i'm ld i'm joined here by winter and winter what do you make of this matchup chain stack today they are using their full roster so they won't be using the stand-ins that'll be for the next two matches but do you think they have what it takes Five seconds remaining. I was wrong yesterday when I said uh, LGD in will win the game. When I followed my gut feeling, telling me that LGD in was in better shape yesterday. And today, my gut feeling is telling me IG is the better team for sure. It's going to be 2 0, but I was wrong yesterday. I could be wrong again today. Yeah, anything is certainly possible. Uh, I mean, with that being said, it's not unreasonable to put your money on IG. So, Winter, we should start diving, I think, a bit more into. Well, the chain stack, because I think a lot of viewers are just becoming familiar with them from Phase 2. I imagine you probably know more about them than most since you scrim against pretty much all these top teams from SEA. But tell us about the chain stack. I personally didn't get to watch many of their games, so I think a lot of our viewers would appreciate a little more sort of insight behind the scenes. I actually didn't really scrim a lot with them, but I know pretty much each of their players. They have uh, Riz, which is an Australian player from N9. Minerva is from Indonesia, Jonet. Chains is from Malaysia. Legendary uh, Chains is uh, a rising. He's he's not he didn't Ten play for any team remaining. before. He started out from playing a lot of pubs and got picked up by this Five team. Chains and Legendary is from Singapore. Yeah, I'm not sure if these two players are from any previous tournament teams. I think they were, but I can't remember the team name. So they are basically a mix of. Singaporean, Malaysian, Indonesian, and Australian. So it is basically the international squad of Southeast Asia. <laughs> yeah, you grab one from everywhere and you form the chain stack. Or, or if you're gods, then you're Australian. Because if you have one Australian, uh, it's like AC said, it's like having alcohol in your drink. A couple drops, now it's alcohol. The whole drink is alcoholic. So, well, we'll see. But with that being said, I, I guess moving on to talk about the drac, the, cha the chain stack, they've been playing a lot of anti-mage uh, for chains, and it's sort of been their trademark card. But we're not going to see it in the first phase of the draft. They go Darkseer Shadow Demon. And then they go back for the Tinker. And this was something that Johnny actually talked about in an interview with the G1 League. If you haven't heard, the G1 League actually has their own website for English viewers. They've been doing interviews and translating them. It's g1.2p.com. And in that interview, he said, if it's a solo mid Tinker, I will play it. But if it's a safe lane, tri lane Tinker, Chains will play it. So I guess we don't know who's playing it. But an interesting pick for them. It's something, at least for me, I have not seen them run. Is this something they like to play or is this something new? Tinker is a very good pickup in C pubs, and you told me you have been playing a lot of C pub games. Yeah, no, I've seen the hero a lot. I just personally haven't seen Chainstack run him. They did play it like I think a couple of games. I think one or two, not much. But usually when they start off with Darkseid and Shadow Demon, you know that anti mage will be coming for Chainstack. But today they want to run something else because IG has Lone Druid. And Anti-Mage does not match up well against Lone Druid unless he can get that farm. And we all know how hard it is to find the farm. Taker is a hero that can stall the game. They won't get their hands on the Anti-Mage Winter. It's been banned. Phantom Lancer is in the pool, I suppose. If you want a strong illusion-based carry, there is a Luna as well. What sort of heroes do you think the chain stack will have their eye on? Or do you think maybe they're just going to kind of skip the hard carries and go for something different? Maybe something like a Wisp? I am not very sure if they like to pick this. I know they... Or maybe a Prophet? I'm they, just thinking sort of a global strategy with the Tinker I know here. they use that hero quite quite significantly a lot as well, but I don't think it's good to pick this game up because if you have Weaves and Shadow Demon, Darkseer, there's not much stuns in your lineup. And not to mention, I don't think they'll be going for a hard carry. They might not go for a hard carry because Lone Druid plus Juggernaut. They can push very fast. The, heal the healing ward will counteract the march of the machines 
defense. So it'll be very, very early pushing for IG. I mean, they have some ways to maybe snipe it, like Shadow Demon Disruption Illusions. That's not too reliable, but perhaps they could get cute with that. If they go for Nature's <laughs> Prophet, you could send the Treants in to try and kill it early. So, uh, of course, with good Ward Micro, it gets a lot more difficult nowadays. Is the Ward, it used to have very slow move speed, but that was buffed quite a while back. And Well, what is the chain stack going to go for with their bans? They've been banning out pretty much all uh, 430s heroes, as we see the Queen of Pain, the Panda bans both here. And then the puck, so expecting the 4th leader's hero has not been picked yet. A pretty solid choice, I must say. But they are leaving the Chuan Rubik in the pool, and I think IG would be pretty happy to pick that one up, or maybe even something like the Sand King. But Rubik has nothing good to steal so far. Ah, he can but, still march the machines. That's pretty good. Uh, but Rubik is a good good support to tag along with the Blade Fury of Juggernaut. They do need a setup stun of some kind, yeah. whatever it is. So, for IG, it looks like and probably an offensive trialing with Juggernaut and then a lone druid in the safe lane. Seems like that's probably how they like to remaining. how they like Rubik to run it. Of the light. Yeah, Rubik keeper of light and Juggernaut would form the formidable trialing. And the chain stack. What will they send against that trialing? If they sent, say, a dark seer there. He probably won't die to that tri lane. I mean, maybe it's this, if you're the chain stack, do you look to just kind of dodge the tri lane? Because how are you going to kill a Darkseer as Keeper of the Light, Juggernaut, Rubik? You can lift him up in the air, but he should be able to surge away and dodge most of it. They go for a very oh, defensive oh. support in the Jakiro. I think this is okay because they can lift the Darkseer, like you said, if you are chain stack, whether you want to dodge the tri lane. I think it's okay for them to do Darkseer versus Lone Jude. You can do what Admiral Bulldog did uh, as an uh, offlane. Darkseer versus one versus one versus one against any hero. Uh, I talked about this to you before. Right. Where you pull from the t tier two tower away to the smaller camp, so you don't get harassed by the the, the solo hero on the lane. And you, as long as Shadow Demon doesn't get caught out, let's say they Five go for the Rubik Juggernaut, <laughs> whoever he leaves, you just disrupt and he'll take a, a lot less damage from the Blade Fury. Oh. Technically, you shouldn't die from that. Yeah, maybe now you will, though, with the Ferrari Invoker, the 430 Invoker, I should say. And if they go for the Rubik, maybe... He almost always has played Quas Wex when I've watched him, but maybe this yeah. is a game where you think about Exhort. We'll have to see, but if they wanted an even stronger tri lane, him. could do I've that. I've never seen him play Exhort, like you said. I, I haven't seen it. I, I assume he knows how to. I mean, he's 430. you got to figure he does. But <laughs> uh, Of course, Quaswex is a little bit stronger if you just want to kind of 5v5. Five the five-man's power of that build is going to be significantly higher, I imagine. And um, Well, let's I don't, let's I don't think so as LD. I think having the two Fort Spirits you think? actually strengthens the five-man a lot more. And you have the two Fort Spirits and your alacrity would be very good as an Exot Invoker. So the alacrity on the Lone Jude Bear, plus the two Forge Spirits, I think he would be going for Exot this year. Here's the only problem if they go that build, is they don't really have any actual initiation then. They don't have anything to start the fights, they have no AoE stuns or crowd control. Uh, Thinking or Rubik would solve the issue, I think. Wow, oh. the chain stack going for Outworld Destroyer. A hero who is fantastic against the Lone Jude Bear because his orb obviously ignores uh, the high the high armor of the bear, it ignores the high agility of Juggernaut and Lone Druid later on in the game. And a potentially a hero that can outcarry these two if the game goes late. So what do you make of this pick? Very dangerous because OD can't help defend the early pushes that IG has. To me, picking the OD now is so risky. You're just going to bang that the Tinker. Shadow Demon and Jakiro will be able to drag the game long enough for your OD to get his whatever items, Refresher, Side of Ice, BKB, you need all those items to to basically stand in the fight. Even if he has a beat Black King Bar, which I think he's forced to get as well because there's so much mixture of spell damage and physical damage with the IG lineup. You don't If you don't have the Black King Bar, you're just going to die to the spell. Wow. So that's expected the Rubik. I can't believe it, Winter, but IG actually got the Chuan Rubik with the 10th pick of the draft. A lot of teams will ban this, if not in the first stage, then certainly in the second. But the chain stack says, no problem, we'll fight it head on. He has Ice Path and the OD ultimate to steal. You, even the Astro Prison is a very good spell to have. If he does steal March of the Machines, that is going to make it very hard for the chain stack to defend. 
Because <laughs> fighting and fighting know. in the march is not fun for either team, so... You will never know which march is which. Oh my god, <laughs> yeah, that's going to be super confusing. Alright guys, anyway, welcome inside game number one. It's Invictus Gaming versus Chainstack. This is your first match in a best of three. The winner of this will be 1-0 and in the group and have the inside track to take first place or at least a top two position. But it's early, it's only game one. We have the big dogs. The top dogs on the side of Invictus Gaming. Chuan himself going to be playing his signature Rubik YYF in the offensive trailing Juggernaut. Faith on that support keeper of the light. Observers and sentries picked up. You'll notice there's no smoke because they have a keeper. This is going to be all about just pressuring that trailing constantly, mowing the tower down, and keeping the aggression up. As for Zhou, he's headed middle lane. He's going to be playing that lone jurid. And safe lane, it will be Ferrari. Rina Protection picked up. Normally you get this for Tranquil Boots, and normally you get Tranquil Boots when you need extra HP regen, which is with the exhort. Cross Exhort build. So I think exhort. we're going to be seeing some Sun Strikes this game, Winter. Yeah, you only go Tranquil Boots if you're Exhort Invoker. And starting with a Protection basically tells you that it's going to be Exhort with the... I've never seen training. this before. You have never seen this before. Well, maybe I've seen it in screams against them before, but I couldn't remember. But for Chain Stacks, we have... The Indonesian player Minerva from sh uh, playing his Shadow Demon, Brice, the Australian player, Darkseer, <laughs> and legendary Jakiro, and mid lane will be Johnny on the Tinker, and last but not least we have Chains on the Obsidian, oh, wait, Outworld de Devourer. Uh, no, what is going on with the lanes here? They are clearly expecting IG to run, I guess, the Lone Druid as a solo off lane, because OD cannot lane against these three by himself. So they, they must be confused about how IG is planning to lane it. I think they were anticipating that their lanes would have a hard time, so they want to do a switch up with two roaming. But you're roaming with Shadow Demon and Jakiro. Usually if you want to do that, you pick up something like a Lina or a Last Shot. You don't use a Jakiro as a roaming dual support with a Shadow Demon. Winter, I, d I actually have no idea if your in-game audio is okay, but just a heads up that there is an in-game ticket, so if you don't have it already... Uh, make sure yeah, to turn I, it on. I have it on already. Top lane, Ferrari, off the bat, maybe giving up a first blind on Shell, it's gonna bring him down, Chainstack. They started with the disruption, they follow up with the ice path, they finish him with the ion shell. And OD has not died yet, so Chainstack getting that quick, easy first blood. And something that Invoker really struggles against is these aggressive trialings. He's not mobile, he doesn't have access into Ghost Walk yet, and he's fairly easy to kill, so... Uh, I guess the question is, Winter, why do you think they chose to put the Invoker top and do they just expect only a Darkseer here? Because you'd think Lone Druid would be better if you expect the Tri-Lane. I think they just want to, yeah, want to put a 1 versus 1. I, I'm not sure whether if they think it's going to be better for a Darkseer up against the Invoker or, or vice versa. I'm not very sure about that because like you said, Darkseer would, would definitely have a better, a harder time against the Lone Druid. So, the interesting thing that I'm no- I I'm having flashbacks. There was a game played at the Beyond the Summit World Tour where Ferrari was a safe lane invoker. He was like level one at six minutes into the game. And he ended the game basically winning it for his team by four staffing Sing Sing for Mouse Sports into his team. Oh, yeah. I remember that game. I remember that game. So, keep Ferrari down early, but that doesn't mean he'll be kept on later. They're going to smoke towards mid lane and uh, potentially going to find a kill here on Joe if Joe doesn't have perfect positioning. But so far... His positioning is pretty much perfect. And it's going to be difficult for them to kill the Obsidian Destroyer at bottom because look at, if you look at the spell combination before, Rubik, he'll, uh, Keep Off the Light and Juggernaut, as long as he gets his prison on himself all the time, oh. he will be able to dodge a lot of the damage. Oh, Winter, they fooled Joe. They fooled Joe. They saw him setting the bear into the jungle. He was keeping his hero in range to try and stay out of disruption, but the ice path is going to catch him. The disruption the will be there. Die. They need the body block. They have the dual breath, actually. This might be enough. He'll pull the bear back in. The rockets will fly. The laser thrown in as well. Joe will go down. What an incredible maneuver. He actually ran his hero over here, and then his bear up onto the high ground. He's scouting for the smoke gank, but they were to the left, and they just backed off. They stayed out of range, and then they went back in. Really good bottom. movement by them. Bottom. And then, well, YYF gonna pick up a kill bottom lane. Actually, Chuan the one to do it, but... 2-1 to one so far for Chainstack. They got the kill on 430. Now they've gotten a kill mid. They did use the smoke for that second kill, and they're gonna rotate bottom now, so... Early on, looking at dead even in terms of gold, dead even in terms of experience, I guess the fact that they've been moving so much just kind of negates the fact they're up a kill in a first blood. Yeah, they 
they made a mistake. Chains used his prisonment on the juggernaut and they ran straight on him. Not to mention, the reason for Chains start even doing this maneuver is because they felt that it's difficult for them to crash head on 3 versus 3, so it's better for them to create uh, unbalanced circumstances in the game by moving around the map, creating, forcing the enemy team to move around to anticipate where they are moving, so the rest of the lanes would farm with less pressure. That's actually a very good decision for them this game. Johnny leveling up laser. He's only taken one point in March. Haven't seen him actually stacking any ancients yet, and. I wonder if he's going to do so. It's not worded, something we often see teams will do against Tinker, but so far he's not even trying to do so. I think the reason for him going that skill build is it was because his teammates were doing a roll, do, doming, ro rolling, uh, sorry, roaming dual support from the start, and he wanted to have more damage to help his team instead of having higher levels in a match. Where you can see now they're transitioning into the two supports protecting the safe lane, so he's going back to his march build right now. And the thing is, how do they kill YY up bottom lane? He can just Blade Fury right out of this. They- Wait, what? Oh, he doesn't have mana for it! Doesn't have mana for Blade Fury! Oh, the OD, that's the reason why, but in comes the backup. Chuan with the double damage, Faith with the big Illuminates, and they will get the kill in the end. I don't know if it was a glitch, but I saw the spin started. I don't know if you I, saw that. I- yeah, I thought I saw it too, but... I guess maybe he did it like the, the the reduced intelligence kicked in a second or two later. I'm not sure. Like right I after the I imprisonment. Saw him start I swear. <laughs> so Johnny is going to be going back for March, and he'll be using that to push out the lane. Hasn't had a chance to stack the ancients yet. Something you normally like to do as that mid tinker is right when the four minute rune or the the rune's about to spawn is run top, stack the ancients, and then go check the rune. But so far, hasn't had a chance to do it and. I imagine so they will be seeing him look to do later on. Top lane, Risk up against Ferrari. I haven't really seen Risk doing too much creep skipping. He got the early first blood, and it looks like he's going to now, but uh, not really able to keep 430 out of lane just yet. Because the the other support was in, I think it was, I, I can't remember who was in the lane. There was two heroes in the lane before. He just rotated bottom because there was a scrimmage happen. Yeah. So now it's 1v1 and he's more comfortable with oh. it and he decides to block the creep. They might even get a gank off from him. I want to point out 430, uh, or rather Zhou, oh, top Ruben lane. Is in. Yeah, there's the teleport, cold snap as well, he's Sunstrike dead. to fly. Oh, no. He's actually pulled out of the Sunstrike, the tower's now in deny range. There could be a surge, no, it's on cooldown. Tower will be most likely denied if they want to bring it down yet. Uh, and also, Zhou's been checking the Ancients with his bear, so he's either been blocking it perhaps, or just making sure that if Johnny tries to stack, he will know about it. Tower is denied top by Zhou. Now Ferrari has to be a little bit more worried about those dives. Probably Tron will sit here for the moment. Actually, it was a good point. Now I, I start to understand why they put the Lone Druid meter, because if you look at the heroes of chain stack, you it was most likely be an OD on the safe lane, because they want to give the OD the most farm, and it will be Tinker in the mid lane. So. They are assuming that the Tinker wants to stack and farm the mid lane, get his boost of travel very fast. If you are Invoker in mid lane, you can't do anything. But if you are Lone Jude, you can block the camps with his bear. So that was the game plan Ooh. why they put the bear in the mid lane. That, Top lane. that makes a lot of sense. Top lane, Tron will get disrupted and now the Ice Path to follow up. He's taking big damage from the Iron Cell. He'll lift up Risk, but he ain't running for this. There could be a Sun Strike, potentially. Oh boy, it's gonna come in. Risk runs the other way. Now Ferrari or 430 on the run and Ice Path will be here. He might be dead too. Oh, he's pretty low. Those Tranquil Boots do not help you run anymore in engagements. You only get plus 25 oh. move speed for them when they're disabled. And, well, he won't die in the end though. Yeah, because the Duck, I, I wasn't paying attention. Duck Seal was actually very low. If Duck Seal wasn't low, he could have chased and helped deal enough damage to kill the Invoker. So overall, Winter, after a bunch of trades, it's only a slight gold lead for the chain stack. Just about 300 gold. They're not going to have the Tinker Ancient stack to kind of go ahead. They're looking bottom at lane. a bottom wraparound. Yeah, Surge, uh, or not Surge, but rather the Sun Strike. Oh, no, not again. really comboed well. It seems like maybe IG isn't that practice with this YYF. Blade Fearing out of tower range. Chains oh my God. drops the ult, gets the kill. He'll probably pay for this with his life, but he's already gotten one in a 1v3. A fourth hero to TP in bottom. That's going to be Ferrari or 430. He's TPing out. Eliminate chat. Won't be enough, but they force 430 off the lane to do it. I gotta say, a pretty great trade for the chain stack, all things considered. Two sun strikes missed because the Rubik pulled him away. It's it's actually a very very normal reaction for the Rubik player, the support to drag whoever you target can assist nearer to your team. But when there's an invoker or anything that has to has a spell to target aim down, it's always better to communicate well or to just leave the target on the exact telekinesis spot. Oh, Johnny. 
Johnny, getting a little trouble here. Chuan is hunting him. He'll throw him back into the river towards that Joe Bear. And Hunt Joe, cold snap to start. Auto attacks to follow. Sunstrike as well. Once again, it will miss. This time because of an entangle. 430, his Sunstrike seem a bit cursed this game. Meanwhile, top lane. YYF, just kind of trying to harass Risk, won't be able to do too much against it, but what Terry kind of reminds me of what we talked about with Wisp, where it's a hero that if you're just not used to playing it, I mean, it doesn't even matter how good you are, it's just a different kind of hero that requires specific practice with that hero, and uh, not that IG's in bad shape this game, but they could be in a better position if those Sunstrikes were hitting. And uh, it seems like they're top, not that that experienced yeah, the, with running the it. One at, the one at top wasn't too much of uh, serious one because the target, uh, I think it was the who was it? Uh, the Shadow Demon still died, but the one at bottom caused them. Yeah, it caused them the death of YYF as well, and would have gone down to that additional damage. Chain stack, their supports continue to be roaming. They've placed down another Observer Ward. This one spotted by a Dire Ward, so maybe D warded soon. And Tinker, Boots of Travel Watch. Johnny's not even close to them actually, and I gotta say, if the Ancients were stacked and he farmed a 3 4 stack Ancients, they would be up by now, so. A really big factor that is delaying Johnny's ability to truly I jump think in this he game. Was, his CS is still okay, it's just that one death that hurt him a lot. Because usually as a thinker, if you don't die in the mid lane, you, you get decent CS, you have your boost of travel by 10 minutes. Look at his goal, he has 1.3k now. If he didn't die, he would have at least another two or 300 gold or 400 gold, so he'll be close to that boost of travel. And, and Lone Druid is such a good hero against Tinker in terms of last Teddy because you can't blind the both. You can't blind the bear and the hero. That's the normally way you can kind of out-CS your opponent is using that laser strategically, but it's not an option for Tinker in this matchup, at least not fully. So as a result, Johnny a lot slower with the boots to travel than he would like, and really it's not his fault. It's just the matchup and a really smart decision by IG in terms of how they lay in the game. And I think the level advantage of their supports, even though you mentioned, oh no, it's actually the gold graph is actually dipping to RG, but the level advantage for their supports are actually a lot compared to the chain stack supports because they were wasting a lot of time roaming around. And look at the levels of the Rubik and Keeper of the Light. They're both level 6. Yeah, level 6. And how do you push now into, the, into, the, uh, into IG? Recall? Maybe coming out? It is, I think. So, oh, is he pulling? Yeah, 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 oh boy. YYF going to be given smoke. He's got the ultimate. He's got the healing ward. He's got 10 stick charges. He is going in on a little secret mission. And who's he going to find? That's the question. Four heroes here. 430 aggressively oh, positioned in the lane. Lord. The smoke will thank be revealed. Lord. And now to the north. Legendary runs right back into YYF. Oh no. Blade Fury to bring him low. But he's actually juking. And now on the sidelines, the Sun Strike is there. This one narrowly going to miss. The Dark Seer arrives with the early mechanism pickup. Tries to save the fight. But too much damage. He will go down. Now the OD ult dropped as well. But YYF is healthy. They are five manning towards this tower bottom. The dive is coming. Risk. No teleport scroll. Legendary high. Illuminate comes through. Chain's trying to TP out, leaving his team to their own devices. Now Legendary thrown up in the air. Oh boy, this not looking good. A secondary Blade Fury. Risk on the run. Is there a lift? Nothing yet. Still oh. running. And they're gonna get the tower. I guess Johnny, if he had Boots of Travel, that dive would be punished, Winter. But no Boots of Travel. Nothing Chain Stack can do about it. He's 70 go shot. And that fight actually didn't really start out too well for IG. Because the Dra Dragon, uh, not Dra Jakiro, he managed to juke a lot of the Blade Reap damage and he didn't really hit a very big ultimate as well and they only killed the Shadow Demon at the start when they engaged with the smoke like that. It, it looked like it could have been a lot worse, but when all things are considered, they at least got the tier 1, so I'd say IG is still pretty happy with how it came out, but you're right, nice jukes from the clunky Jakiro. I don't know how he's moving like that, but he's got the moves legendary. anyway. Like he has a legendary Jakiro play, that's for sure. <laughs> well, he showed it there. Will it be enough though? Joe now up to 2,500 gold. And I'm curious what build he'll go for this game. I imagine you have to think about Radiance just because there's Tinker and you want to counter a mm. split push. I think if he wants to go push early, but he isn't that farm to get a Radiance that quickly. Hmm. It's he probably go for the Maelstrom build oh, because he it's is. more You're efficient. Right. Yeah, uh, it's better for him to push. If you want to push earlier, the male Shombo is better. Well, he wants to push earlier. There is a level 4 March of the Machines now. IG, they don't have a mech, although it's coming soon on Faith. They don't have a pipe, but they do have the bear. And the bear is pretty damn tanky, even against March. But the push will be slowed. I, I, got, a, I got a feeling he'll go for Amlet after this. <laughs> oh man, not this build. I think Admiral Bulldog is watching, so a player who certainly loves that build as well. Something that we were not really seeing much of in the Asian scene until recently.
We did see it yesterday. Uh, Pycard used it like a couple of games on his laundry. Only very recently, though. We before that, it was a build that wasn't that popular, right? I mean, I wasn't seeing it anyway. It was actually, if you look into the details of it, it was actually. Oh, oh no! Has he stolen Ice Path? Oh, he has. The oh, oh, the no. march down to 50 HP. But he's got Ice Path now. Yeah, he risked his life just to try to steal the Ice Path. So now they have some crucial crowd control in these upcoming team fights. There's also a Meteor. Invoker, only level 8. He's a bit oh. under level. They're diving the tower. They got Johnny, but he'll be disrupted. That sets up the Blade Fury. That sets up the Meteor. Johnny on the run. He's got to rearm here and find find some more opportunities for March, but he's still running. Juggernaut's still chasing. YYF on the hunt. He'll be ice packed in the trees, but they don't have the damage. And IG forces them off the tower. Now they're in position under it. And I think the chain stack just going to have to let this one fall. And I think the th the one small thing that would that will make IG push all the towers uncontested is that healing ward. Nobody can touch the healing ward from chain stack. And if you Nobody. try to go near it, you get ice path by Chuan. That's actually what set them up there as well, was Chuan hit the ice path on Tinker, then he had to be disrupted, and then he had to run. And if you... That's the long-range initiation that makes it hard for Tinker to safely set up the march of the machines, and IG heading straight towards top. They want this tier 1 here as well. Yeah, they're gonna be... Asserting their map dominance in the next couple of minutes, taking down all the tier one towers and the tier two probably, and putting up a lot of lots of wards. After that, they'll proceed to the Roshan, because I don't think chains that can oh. really fight this early without those items. They may try, but the tier one's already fallen top. They rotated five here, but it really feels winter like they're just reacting. Every time they see IG moving around the map, they are trying to respond, but they're not forcing the fights. Every fight is happening on IG's terms and. IG are the ones getting the bigger bonuses. They're getting the towers. They're getting... Uh, they already have the Maelstrom up on the Lone Druid, I believe. Or at least the gold for it should be coming out soon. And then Jill going to be yeah. working towards that next big item. And with that, maybe they look for Roche. Maybe they look for Tier 2s. And if you look at Chainstack Hero, it's actually di very difficult for them to engage without having a Blink Dagger or anything on the Tinker. If Tinker goes doesn't go for Son of Wise's game and he goes for his traditional... Dagon, <laughs> it's gonna be so difficult for them to engage. They need the hex from either the OD or the Tinker, but if you look at their economy right now, it's very bad. That's like, that, that's just not happening anytime soon. If the game goes much longer, these are heroes that can farm decently, especially the Tinker, but it's gonna be tough at that. YYF taking a lot of March Machine damage mid, Ice Path thrown out by Chuan, Ice Path crisscrossing, X marks the spot. I mean that's 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 I, like I, I asking prefer. that's like asking Luxembourg to build an aircraft carrier. It's just not really in the budget. <laughs> I prefer the the fissure ex fissure from the Rubik and the Earthshaker. That's more fun. Yeah, that one doesn't even make sense because they they don't like interrupt each other. One just goes right over the other. I, it confuses me visually. Oh my god, he's going Amlet. He bought the Helm of Iron Will. Oh man. Well, it kind of makes sense. You want to just finish this. You want to get the Rax down as early as possible. Because later on, it's going to be really hard once Johnny has enough farm. Amlet is very good against Tinker. Because of the regeneration you get from it. And it really helps the bear a lot. But to be honest, I think I actually think even the healing ward, the healing ward alone heals the bear. For, if I'm not mistaken, a level 4 healing ward heals the level 4. Lone Jew bear for around 140 HP per second. I think that's actually very sufficient already. It's a lot. I mean, what is it, 5% at level 4 per second? And the Lone Jew bear sitting at, what, 2700 HP? Yeah, something yeah, like that. You're the math person. You're the math person. Oh, uh, boy. It's 140 around, around there. It's a lot. I mean, basically, you could bring it back and it'll be up to full HP within 20 seconds. We know that one for sure. That's easy math. Plus a little bit less, because they'll have the armlet as well, so... Uh, they have their mech up for IG, and they're going to do some warding around the map. They don't have vision now, and they're going to oh, run Oh, they're going to find Legendary. Can legendary. his Legendary plays be here? Omni Slash says no. Telekinesis Lift says no. Sunstrike says no. And down he will go, and for good measure, Joe brought into Sunstrike the fight. Didn't hit. Sunstrike didn't hit LD. Was he up in the air at the time? No, he just missed. Oh. Well, it looked like it hit. Anyway, Johnny gets caught by Ice Pad. Chuan oh, diving. Chuan, Chuan needs to remove that tower aggro, but Mech is actually there to bail him out, and now they're looking at a tier 2 top. March is here. It's only one layer as of yet, and that bear working away on the tower. Risk going for a vacuum in, but he gets thrown up in the air. The Meteor to follow, and now dropping low. Cold snapped and then rooted, and then Sunstrike, and that one most certainly will hit.
And the tower likely to fall after this. And OD just trying to push out that bottom lane. Can't bring a whole lot to these fights. And I mean, really, we are just seeing the power of IG's five-man Dota right now. It's just a weakness as well. Because if your enemy team is five-man Dota, and your carry is something like an OD who doesn't have anything to speed up his farm by pushing the crits really quickly, he doesn't have any spell to clear out lanes to punish the five men other than the Tinker. But they can't give all the farm to the Tinker because OD will be totally useless if he doesn't have anything up. So it's very, very hard for them to gain an advantage if IG is five men pushing. IG, they now got a Yule Scepter up on Ferrari. They're going for Roshan. And with Ford Spirits as well as Alacrity, Something we haven't actually talked about is how good Alacrity is on the Lone Druid Bear, but that spell is ridiculous. Gives the bear so much attack speed, so much damage as you level up the Wex and the Exor, and something that will help them not only break the base, but just kill the heroes really quickly in these fights. And a combo that we used to see, I want to say back at TI2 a lot, was the Lone Druid and the Invoker back when the Wex Invoker was really popular. So maybe making a bit of a return here, Winter. It's going to make it even harder to ch for Chainstack to defend, and now I imagine the E just coming out for Zhou. Yeah, it's going to be difficult, and I really like the Exot play this game. It's very similar to quite a number of players play. Uh, I watch Isotai do this build a lot. It's going to be the use Trankle, Stick, Yules, and Daggers. I personally like to play it in Pops a lot, this build. It's very strong at solo killing enemies. If the hero doesn't have anything to defend himself or fast off or any sort of form. Shadow Demon probably is not the one of the best targets to go on because he can disrupt himself, himself. But if you get the deafening blast right, you can actually stop him from disrupting himself for a couple of one or one second or one point five seconds, and that's usually enough time for you to kill the shadow demon solo. In theory, there's also an astral imprisonment, but in practice, I mean, you could catch their entire team with that deafening blast potentially. And blink dagger now up on Johnny, uh, uh, the best item for just pure split pushing. But can he split push fast enough all by himself? Can he defend fast enough all by himself? I'm not sure. We're about to find out just how strong his digger play is. He'll create some march. Now he goes into the trees. He'll start creating additional layers momentarily. But the siege is coming. The fort spirits are here. And actually, they're backing off. They're heading towards mid. They're going to defend for the moment. So he buys his team a moment of respite. And Chainstack will back off. It feels like... They're going to catch someone, I think. Oh no. First hit entangled. Now the sun strike to follow the meteor on top of it. Legendary just explodes. You can't juke when you're flying and when you're burning. You just die. And Johnny gets caught. Here's your Omni Slash. Blade Fury as well. No way out for him. Assassinated while trying to be cute with March. YYF says, no more cute for you. And now they come for the tier 2 mid. <laughs> there was a ward that saw him. Yeah, a great ward if you want to push this middle lane as well, just to make sure that nobody's trying to backstab you on the high ground. And there's nothing... Look at how slowly they can speed push, because Odie has nothing at all to speed push, except for his right clicks. Let's see. They're looking at the racks now. They've got the double forward spirit up. They've got the lone jerd bear. Racks dropping quickly. The glyph is on cooldown. There's no march to the machines, like you said. There's just no way to stop this bear, or so it seems. The racks in trouble. Healy Ward has run out, but does it matter? They still have a Yasha, a drums of the Juggernaut. He's working on the racks quickly. There will be a vacuum, potentially. He's cold step. He's disrupted. The Deputy Blast flies out. He's now in prison. They stack the two of them to keep Risk alive. Risk forced the surge. If he got. If he got uh, entangled there, he would have taken a fall. They got the Rex, they get out, and they're pushing into a Tinker without a pipe. But they have something special, and that is called a Healy Ward. It doesn't even matter. Yeah, the healing Ward just counteracts the Tinker, basically. The Tinker spans is basically down to nothing when there's a healing Ward up. And the Lone Druid Bear as well, I mean, something that's also pretty good against... He's good against Tinker too, because sure, it takes damage from March, but it's so tanky compared to an average creep that it can live through a good amount of damage and still be useful for a, a good whack or two on the racks. And I mean, just the combo from IG, it really seems like they had the, the stronger game plan in terms of ha not really the laning stage necessarily, but their mid-game plan was there, whereas for Chainstack... Seems like they're not able to execute it. They're going to try to fight bottom. Risk has a level 1 wall, but that won't help you much against Lone Druid. Vacuum in. Wall not being used. They're trying to take the fight outside of their base. So YYF mans up. Disruption is here. Macropire as well. Everybody running through it. Nobody gives two hoots. YYF, no ultimate for 10 seconds time. The ice path was stolen. And in the trees, it's Johnny throwing the rockets, throwing the machines. YYF waiting for that Omni. He's about to let loose. Ice path will catch two. Buyback, it looks like, from our Darkseer. 
Wall available. Level 2 now. Never got to drop it. They tried to fight at the tier 2, which I think was a bit of a mistake, but they don't want to let IG get to the base, and IG's going to get there now anyway. You know, with the bear, basically, you were talking about how the bear can withstand the Tinker much, but <laughs> I just feel that Lone Jude can withstand anything in the <laughs> game that can tr be thrown at him at defending base. He really, he really, especially in, in Asian Dota, just feels like the strongest carry. You know, there was a period where Luna was popular, Morphling had his heyday at the International too, Anti-Mage has seen some play on and off as sort of the prime carry, but Lone Druid has been there forever, and even with some slight nerfs, Winter, he is just, he's such a reliable carry, because he doesn't have to be, he doesn't have to be pulled, he doesn't need support, but he'll benefit from it, you can throw him offlane, you can throw him mid. A hero who just delivers time and again, especially in the hands of someone like Zhou at a team like IG, who really knows how to build a composition around him that maximizes his effectiveness. Yeah, and Lone Jude is very, very aggressive. You can be played very aggressive. It's not like a hero where you take you take this carry and you sit back and farm and turtle. No. Lone Jude, you let him farm the ten, first 10 minutes and the next 5 minutes, all your 6 tier, tier outer tier towers are gone. And if you want to take it late game, we've seen that too. We saw LGD defeat DK in a 90 item. minute game. 12 items. Oh yeah. He does it all. He never runs out of item slots, man, LD. <laughs> oh, it's fun. I, I've never gotten to the mythical 12 items myself, but I imagine it's quite fun. 8 or 9, I think, is the, the most most players will ever hope to see. Ice Path on the bear. Only slowing this push down, though. They've got to find a way to stop the aggression. There's a, there is actually... A little bit of an initiation on Joe, but they can't actually go in the tower. Look at him. Look at where is Joe standing? He's such a man. He's such a bear. Vacuum in. Wall deployed. But if you're IG, you just look to back off. YYF is purged, but Minerva, the first one to fall. The bear still working. The cyclone is churning. And looking to come back in is YYF. Joe back to the racks, back to the focus. They still have the bear resummon the Healy Ward on cooldown for a bit. And now YYF just wants to go in, but he says, all right, I guess I'll take your racks. That's two lanes of racks, basically uncontested. GG, the chain stack. Well, they went for something different. They didn't go for their signature anti-mage. They didn't go for the carry who can split push quickly. And IG just had all the answers for them in game one. Yeah, you can see how little the much of machine does to them. It's not only the healing ward LD, it's also... They don't even have a pipe yet. It's also because of the null feel from the Rubik. Oh, that's he a great point. Only skill, he opted to only skill telekinesis to two levels, and he has three levels on the null field. That's a very smart build, because chain stack is almost entirely magical damage as well. There's almost no physical damage for this lineup, so... Uh, and, and the telekinesis lift, it's enough at level one, because they have cold snap to follow up. They have Omni Sledge, which will chase heroes, and they have Entangle, which, after that initial setup, with Armlet and Hyperstone and Treads on the bear, nobody is running away from you. You're almost certain to get an Entangle at that point, so... A smart little adjustment by Chuan. IG, I mean, it goes back to what I was mentioning earlier and what we talk about a lot with this team, which is they always have an overarching game plan, something that it seems like a lot of other teams, they have strong heroes, they have a certain style they like to use, but IG, even if their draft looks unusual for them, which this one didn't really look that unusual, aside from the Invoker, there's always a very clear-cut strategy on how to win the game, and they executed it beautifully in this game one. Yeah, just some minor, just some minor hiccup with the telekinesis and sunstrike that actually troubled them uh, quite a bit. But when my wife died because of the miscommunication. Normally, it's Chuan yelling at his team. I wonder if it was 4:30 yelling at Chuan there. Well, we'll have to see. Either way, IG they will take game one of this best of three. We're currently locked in it in Group B. Winner of this match will be the first team to have a win in Group B. Only the top three teams from this stage will advance into the playoffs, and only. Four of the six teams for the playoffs will make it to the land finals. Chain stack are, are, I mean, indisputably sort of the weakest team, the underdog in this group in most people's eyes. Not to say they can't uh, secure that third place or second place or maybe even first, but they're on the ropes now and get in their first best of three. They will be using stand-ins for their second two matches. So at least taking a game here for them is absolutely crucial. I'm LD of Beyond the Summit. I'm joined here by Winter. Stay tuned, guys. Game two coming up right after this.